In this video, we're going to look at simulation automation for training workshops and testing. Automation of simulation workflows is as old as the hills and, well, if well designed and executed, it's got lots of potential to save time and reduce risk. Some automations are grand edifices which draw on considerable expertise and may have quite a bit of attention to detail needed in order to deliver their magic. And some automations spring to life and start doing their job over the time scale of a coffee break. In a previous video, Automation 101, I looked at classic uses of driving simulation assessments and data mining tasks. The point of those scripts were to allow the user to focus on understanding how performance has evolved rather than interactions with the tool. Automation can evolve from whatever our current workflow is and the current needs of the project and the climate. For example, if we spent time looking at performance patterns to form opinions about how well a design is working or hence getting hints about risks of poor comfort or unmet hours, well, we might arrive at a list of metrics that we want to test against as the project evolves. That sounds like a coffee break animation. So what is that like? Some simulation suites, such as EFSBR, can take their input from a list of keystrokes rather than fingers. Once we have evolved a workflow that does the task that we need, our job is to capture it. When Automation 101 was produced, this was a seriously pedantic process. And sometimes fixing the software takes less time than explaining pedantic workarounds. An option to capture user inputs and dump them into a script that replicates those interactions, well, that's a game changer for automators. Goodness, why didn't I do this a decade ago? Let's take a data mining case for one of the ESPR exemplar models to capture a series of performance metrics. We begin in the model configuration folder with that small office model. In its temp folder, there's an annual performance file. So to capture the workflow, we start the results analysis module of ESBR in text mode and pass it the name of the performance file, as well as the dash K option to tell res to capture inputs and dump them to file. Details don't really matter, but what we're doing is traversing the menu hierarchy, typing in commands needed, and selecting various types of reporting. And does the topics that we desire, as well as some of the formatting of those reports. If we look at the report, it's a mix of statistics and monthly data that was selected by the user. But also in that folder with the performance file is a quote key file. That's the automation script that was generated by the simulation module as we used it. So let's copy that to our working folder. And let's rename the data mining report so that we can compare. Invoking the script, yeah, lots of chatter. At the end of it, there is a new data mining report.
if we use meld, we can see that, hey, the two reports are identical. Let's go beyond conventional automation. For any given simulation task, everyone was an, once a novice. Somebody who doesn't quite know what's going to happen next and might not have the relevant information available to answer the questions the tool is pestering you for. Gaining proficiency in simulation tools is inevitably a sequence of tasks through which a model fit for some purpose might emerge. Workshops could be based on, say, a set of standard exemplar models. Or there's the passing around a USB stick to participants. Or the workshop organizer might have designed their own model set. Say, this was the model that the organizer had designed. A simple model like this might be 10 or 15 minutes work for somebody who's used the tool for some time rather longer for a novice. Ooh, and if there are glitches along the way, well, open-ended, I'd say. In later stages of the workshop, participants might be asked to work on a mostly complete model. And here, a software agent is the starting point for an exercise. In this folder, there are two scripts. It's the instructor's job to say how the scripts are supposed to be run. There'll be some command line options, which set, say, the name of the model, its location, the year of the simulation, and that sort of thing. If we invoke that script, we get some chatter, not unlike what we saw when capturing the data mining workflow. And then, oh, wait, a model opens up. A brief look around that model and the thermal zone, and it would appear to be substantially complete. If we exit from that, in the folder, we not only see that there's a new folder called Exercise 1, but there are a number of shell scripts. One does say the initial steps, one adds a window and door, one defines occupancy, one sets simulation parameters, and one generates a QA report. These were all created by that software agent. In the header, there's the usual document about what its purpose is. And then there's a sequence of functions such as create the box room. There's some local variables and some lists of commands. Again, with some documentation added, those commands were from an interactive uh, session. And then the lists of commands are combined and written to form a shell script. Other sections do similar sorts of things. And lastly, we've got a section that parses the options passed into the scripts and model invokes the model creation functions in order. And then when all the shell scripts have been created, uses them to drive the simulation tool. Let's look at one of the simple shell scripts. The first line identifies it as a shell script. The third line invokes the tool with that classic indirect xxx, followed by a sequence of commands ending with xxx. So here's another use case where we want to run the software agent interactively, potentially pausing at an earlier stage of the model development. Also, we can see the agent is running in verbose mode and it's showing us the sequence of keystrokes that are being generated. This is valuable for the workshop instructor to double check that the sequences still work after an update to the simulation tool itself.
Looking into the model a bit further, we can see that the attribution of the surfaces in the room also includes attributes needed to drive the creation of an airflow network in the future. So, how complete is this model? We have, of course, overhangs, but we haven't yet calculated the shading and insulation patterns. Let's fast forward through that. And then we can invoke the February assessment that was included when the model was created. With such a simple model, it only takes a couple of seconds to run. And no exercise is complete without a cursory look at some performance graphs. How about some result temperatures over the month? And let's add in some solar radiation entering the room. Workshops are fertile ground for glitches. When you hear the scream from the back of the room, well, how do we recover? Well, one way to do it is invoke the shell script to regenerate the initial stage of the model. But first, of course, we want to move, I, move aside the prior exercise one folder. After we run the script, we can go into the model folder and we can view that, yes, this is indeed an earlier stage of the model. For example, in the room, there are only the initial bounding surfaces. They are attributed and the participant can now proceed from this point. Adding keystroke capture to the simulation tool is, to use a Glasgow expression, pure dead brilliant. Workshop developers can use this to automate the creation of models they will be using in their workshop rather than rely on what the software vendor includes. And while they're at it, they can design the stages of the model creation as needed and they can avoid the hassles of maintaining multiple stages of the same model.